Hi, I'm Milesy, and today I'm going to be showing you something that's been requested a lot lately. And it seems like when I was talking to someone who requested it, the reason why is because it's one of those things that tends to get really overcomplicated and just thought about too hard. It's actually a lot more simpler than a lot of people think it is or that it should be, but I'm going to show you how to grid your fabric, both with uh, washable pens and with uh, some line. I like to use red monofilament. You can use any kind of thread or anything that you like, but I like this a little bit more and I'll get into why later. So the first thing you want to do is find the center of where you will be working. And we're gonna say that's just right there. So I'm gonna put that needle right there to mark the center. And I actually bought a special pen just to do this video. And of course now I can't find it, so I hope that one of these actually has some ink in it. But we're gonna take our pen. This is just one of these little water erasable pens. I'm not sure how well you can read that, but you can get these pretty much anywhere. Joanne, Michaels, Walmart, anywhere that sells craft supplies, you can usually find these for pretty cheap. So now that we know where our center is, we've got a hole that's slightly bigger than all the rest. And again, I'm not sure how well that comes across, but that's all we need. So the first thing I like to do is just mark a little cross right there in the middle. And this is not showing up too well. Let's go find a different one. And you want to make sure that you're marking on the holes and not on the part where you're going to be stitching over because that's just going to get confusing and it's not going to get as easy. So now that we've marked the center, we're gonna take and just kind of count out. So this is the center. So that's zero right here. So we're going to come out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm just going to mark that one right there. That shows up, up a little bit better. And we're going to go out again. Zero at the line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and mark right there on the holes. And then we come out from the center and we'll do it the other way. So zero at the center. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And just mark right there. Zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now we have this line, so we're going to take it from right here. And I'm going to try to do this so you can actually see what I'm doing, but ordinarily I'd have my arms all over this here. So you're just going to take very carefully and mark a line along those holes. Now, what you want to do, and this is going to come more of an art lesson than a, a stitching lesson, but you want to make sure that you keep your wrist as stiff as you can. You're not gonna be bending your wrist. You're not going to be bending your elbow too much. You're going to completely draw from your shoulder and that will give you more control. It will keep your ink from going where you don't want it to and it will give you that nice, even straight line. So now that we have our middle horizontal line, we're going to do the vertical one. So we start here again at zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we're going to mark that one. And then one more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we mark that one. And then we come down here and repeat. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mark that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we mark that one. And we're gonna get that out of the way. 
And now we're going to mark the center line going downward, keeping your wrist and your elbow locked and just draw with your shoulder and you'll get a nice even little straight line. And from here now, it's just a matter of connecting all of the dots. So we draw out here and I like to do the outer edge first. And there we go, yep. And I find that it's often easier to go down than it is up, just because it seems like it's more of a natural movement for your shoulder to make. So there we go, we have the outline. And now we're just going to do the inner ones. And for this one, we're gonna have to go up, being a little bit extra careful. There we go. And there we go. And we'll just do this one all the way across. And now we have our little grid. Forty by forty grid, very simple, very easy to do. Okay, now that we've done the gridding with the pen, I'm going to show you how to use something like a monofilament or just regular old thread to do this. Normally, I would prefer the monofilament just because it's harder to stitch through it and you can pull it out really easily. But that's really hard to film with, so I'm actually going to make it easier on myself and just use some thread, which I have right here. And I'm going to cut myself off a piece. And the first thing that we want to do is just kind of locate the center. And we're going to say that our center is right about here. Here looks like a good place for the center. So we're just going to make a little bit of a hole there so that we can see it. There we go. And we're going to thread up our needle. And I'm going to use all six strands here just so that you can see it really easily if I can get it threaded. There we go. So this right here is our center, this part right here. So what we want to do is count one, two, three, four up from the center, which is right here. And I'm actually gonna pull that through the bottom. So that's one, two, three, four to the center. Then we're going to count down four. One, two, three, four. And we're going to put that through. And then we have one hole right here. We're going to skip that hole and we're going to go down to the next one. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Because that's how many that one was right here. And now that we have this one, we're going to skip one, go to two. This one's going to be our bottom row if we're doing a 40 by 40 grid. So we have our thread through here, and then we go one, two, three, four at the bottom. And I'm gonna pull this through because I'm gonna let the thread go all over the place on the back because I'm not going to be stitching on this. And I don't feel like re-threading my needle again and again. This is not something you'd want to do, but I'm doing that just to make that easier on myself right now because my battery is dying and I don't want to refilm this again. So we have our center right here. So we're going to go, here's that one, skip that first hole, go to the second, and we're gonna pull that through and go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, down that goes. First hole, second hole. And we're only going to count one, two, three, four, because that's the top. So there's our vertical center line. So we're going to come back here. This is the middle right here. And we're going to count out one, two, three, four. That's where we're starting. 
So one, two, three, four, it's hidden right there. Five, six, seven, eight. And down that goes. So now we skip that middle hole and we go to the second one. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Skip that hole, come through this one, and this is the edge, so we're only going to count to four. One, two, three, four. And then we're gonna come back over here. There's that one. Come through the second one. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. First hole, go through the second one. One, two, three, four. Now, ordinarily, what you would want to do is that each of these lines would actually be its own separate thread. But like I said, I'm making it a little bit easier on myself for filming and just using one. Don't just use one. You can, if you're using the monofilament, you can even pull it through so that you're using this end of the thread to do this half, and then you go to that end of the thread to do that half of the line. That's one way you can do it, and another reason I prefer the monofilament. But I tried to film with that, and quite frankly, it was a disaster, so I'm just using this for now. So now that we have our line right here, we can take this and trace up to where the corners are because doing it from the corners here are going to be the easiest now because we want to do that outline. So we come here and we can see that lines up with that, that lines up with that. So we're at the corner and we're gonna count one, two, three, four. And down it goes. There's that first hole, skip that one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can see right here that it still lines up and that's exactly what we want to do. So if you're a little bit nervous, just make sure that you check that every now and then and make sure that you are actually lining it up where it needs to be. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the more lines you get on here, the easier it will be to keep track of what you're trying to do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But expect there to be a lot of counting at first. Okay, now we have our outline here that's going to make it a little bit easier now to just go in through here. So we have zero, one, two, three, four. And then we'll come up through here. And here we go. And now that we're a little bit closer to the other lines, we can see what we're doing a little bit easier and it goes a lot faster. You don't really have to count. You just have to make sure that you're lined up with everything else. And now it starts going really fast. As you can see, this does take a little bit more time than the other vert or the other way does because you're having to do a lot of counting and it's just kind of a little bit more fiddly so there are pros and cons to each method one two three four i do prefer the pens uh just because i can do it a lot faster than i can do this way and i'm not usually super worried about the dyes in the uh, thread or the fabric running out, especially since mostly I just use white fabric anyway. But it's kind of one of those things like everything else where there are many, many different methods to do it and you can just find the way that works the best for you. And oftentimes knowing multiple ways to do it can make it a little bit easier to find that. 
So there we go. That's what a grid using uh, the thread or any kind of line will look like. And for comparison, this is what it looks like when you draw it on. It's going to be exactly the same. Either way, you're going to be going along the holes rather than along the solid part. And you're just going to have to remember that starting at this, going from this side over, this is stitch one. And this row right here is stitch one. And then covering this up to here, when you stitch over it, that will be stitch 10. Again, along here on the bottom will be stitch 10. So you're not going to be really stitching over the lines really, unless you use this, in which case you're going to want the whole thing to be stitched over um, as much as possible. Again, there are just ways to do it each way. You can also get pens that are similar to this, but they are purple. And the purple pens are great for if you're doing something super small and super quick because they will evaporate in the air. They take about two or three hours. I don't have one on me, unfortunately, but they look just like these, only they're purple. Uh, I don't recommend them for something like full coverage though because you're going to lose your grid in about two or three hours. So if you're going to be spending a significant amount of time on it, you'll want to use either the blue pen or you'll want to use the version with the stitched grid on there. And then you just pull the stitches out when you're done and the monofilament makes that easier. When you're using the floss or any other kind of thread, you have to be really careful not to stitch through the thread or else you're going to have a very hard time getting it out. But hopefully that clears up any kind of confusion some of you have had with the gridding. I hope this has helped. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them down in the comments below and I will get to them as soon as I can. But until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye.